some of these names are like two, three dollars uh, off their off their regular session highs, and that's going to be a very big problem. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So, after yesterday's uh, pretty big move, right? We had a nice little rally yesterday. The question was, what was going to happen today, right? And the, the old adage is, if something doesn't take out the previous day's highs, it's very, very hard for to rationalize a scenario how something goes higher. And that's the one thing we didn't have yesterday. And so, going into today's session, we you know we had to see what would happen, right? And the biggest takeaway was, there's a couple of two takeaways, which I thought the bulls did a really good job, right? Number one, the overall environment. Again, we're still below the 50-day moving average. We're still way below the daily supply. For the market to be bullish, we would have to reclaim this whole light blue line. We're still 25 points away. So that's, we're not talking about down the road. We're talking about strictly day by day, trying to figure uh, everything out to the best of our ability. So. So the market gapped up today pretty strong, and it wasn't like just a little bit of a gap up. These stocks had a really aggressive gap up. Everything was up, you know, two, three, four, five dollars above the previous day's highs. And I'm like, well, okay, that's bullish. The only problem was this morning there was supply staring here at the queues off this 277 level. Why was that important? That's the linear regression line. Again, it's not a brick wall. These supply zones are not brick walls, but there's a high probability that those areas will get tested. And if you don't know they're there, well, they're probably gonna get stuffed. And that's exactly what happened uh, right at the open. So anybody who bought stock at the open, you know, soon to realize what happened. And here's literally at the open here. You know, the market opened up, you had this really, really big gap and just, just destruction, absolute destruction uh, into, into the lunchtime hour. And you could see here where this 77 area came into play. Again, this is a very, very real number. This is why I encourage everybody to put as many of these supply zones are so you're not trading blind. You don't, you know, it's, it's, uh, you don't have to guess where these stocks are going to stop. So the queues actually went red. I mean, this is a really nice move. They went from 77 all the way down to this 268 level. Really exagger exaggerated range. And you're saying to yourself, uh-oh, here we go again, right? We're still below the 50-day moving average and nothing has materialistically changed. And then slowly but surely, the market started rebounding because the market held the bottom of the 60-minute support and started rallying. And then right around that two, you know, two o'clock, three o'clock area, maybe I'm a little off, iPhone, well, not iPhone, but Apple comes out with uh, basically a PR and it says, iPhone, Apple plans to reduce its iPhone 14 uh, production, considering it's like the paint hasn't even dried to, to, from the introduction, that's kind of a big deal. And I, I give the bulls a lot of credit. The, the market could have easily rolled over on that news and say, here we go again, this is the same thing, that's it, bulls suck, everything sucks, the world's gonna end. You saw this really big aggressive move down, took down a lot of stocks with it, but in really good fashion, right? If the bulls, if you believe in the whole bullish theory, in really good bullish fashion, they came back. They came back very, very aggressively and closed pretty well. And at the end of the day, you saw 1% uh, across the board on the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ 100. However, a lot of names, and we'll get, to in, we'll get to Netflix in a second, a lot of names were way off, right? Way off their daily high. And again, if you go back to the theory we just talked about a couple of minutes ago, stocks cannot go higher without taking out the previous day's high. Well, that's a little bit of a problem going into the Netflix earnings. So Netflix came out with earnings uh, and I just kind of glanced over, I'm kind of looking at it now. They did 310 versus 211, which is pretty big. They did uh, 7.93 billion in revenues. They beat that as well. The only thing is they will no longer guide quarterly paid membership after the fourth quarter. If you remember two quarters ago, that was the big uh, decline in Netflix when they announced for the first time in history, a significant loss in subscribers. So they're not doing that any, you know, any time going uh, forward. And if you look at Netflix right now, surging after hours, uh, stock is up. Uh, stock is up 14, 15 percent. Just a really, really big 
uh, move there. Not only Netflix, you have ISRG, right? They make uh, medical equipment, I think prosthetics. Um, I think so, I, I think so. Here's, here's ISRG, uh, also surging after the close by about 7%. Uh, you got UAL, right? You got UAL just to kind of sprinkle in uh, different uh, different groups up 6% throughout uh, the after hour session. So you're getting a broad, nice little rally on earnings going into tomorrow's session. And here's the little problem we have for tomorrow, right? Here's the problem we have. The fact that we had such a big intraday decline on a lot of names, we are still, despite the bump in after hours uh, on a lot of names. And again, you can see after hours on names, for example, like Amazon, these are all 60 minute views, right? Amazon, uh, AMD, right? Everything's bumping up after hours. You got Tesla who reports tomorrow. And again, Tesla just continues to be just an absolute phenomenal trader today. Two separate pivots uh, to the downside. Tesla actually went red today. Uh, off its pre-market highs. But the most important part going into tomorrow's session is even with the gap up, right? Even with the gap up today after hours on a lot of these names, we're still looking at some of these names are like two, three dollars uh, off their off their regular session highs. And that's gonna be a very big problem extending into the into the opening uh, into the opening range. So I, I think tomorrow the most prudent thing to do, just because we are kind of stuck in the middle of the ranges despite uh, the really good bump up today in Netflix earnings and ISRG as well. I think in a weird way, we almost have to wait till the 10 o'clock turn, right? For all you guys uh, who are watching this the first time, uh, you know, the PS60 theory, it's it's not one or five or 15 or 30 minute channels, uh, 30 minute candles. It's six, 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 60 minute uh, intervals. That's it. There's only six candles for the day. The first one uh, starts at 10 o'clock. So we're going to have to see if the market is going to continue to be strong and obviously uh, shaking off that first pull today in the morning. That's that's a good thing, right? Shaking off the, the iPhone news towards the end of the day. It's a good thing, right? Now, the question is, can these stocks uh, can stocks today, they got rejected uh, off that 277 level on the queues, reclaim today's highs and start building. And, and that's kind of where we lead uh, on the ETF side, right? The bulls really need, if you look at the queues uh, after the close, right? What happened, right? I don't even know if this is a real print, but it's good. The queues are really going to need to get above this 7778, right? For, for, for this rally to have some legs, that's more than like one or two days. The cues after they got that initial bump with Netflix, they kind of faded down a little bit. So for the market to rally tomorrow, right? For anything to be more than sustained one or two days of strength and wash and strength and wash, the queue is going to need to get above this 270, 77 and a half, 278 level to start building back. If you look at the SPYs, right, you kind of have the same thing today. SPYs gapped up, put in a high today, 75 and a half, and then drift. I mean, look, look at the, you know, look at the wash today, right? I mean, this has all happened at the same time. Look at the wash. The, the, the spies went from 75 and a half all the way down to 368. That's a significant move to rally back. So again, in this type of environment, you are going to continue to see the high aggression volatility. You are going to see the sporadic overnight up 300, down 300 moves. And, and, and it sounds great on surface, but it's really not. Again, you don't wanna be ever, I don't care what your strategy is, you don't wanna be ever put in the situation that you're forced, right? You're mentally forced, not experienced traders, but more newer traders between uh, the you know your development years of one to five years, you don't want to be sitting there and almost almost like on gunpoint to to participate in the gap up, okay? Because gap ups are aggressive, right? What they do, they fill in gaps. They they're, they're all over the place. Liquidity dries up at, at the open. You get wider spreads, higher probability that the market's going to pull a different direction. So you're almost forced if you're a newer trader, if you don't know any better to kind of play the scoreboard instead of playing your setups and considering the fact that everything is going to open tomorrow right in the middle of their ranges, I think it's prudent for us to wait for the 10 o'clock turn to see which way does it confirm? Is it gonna get pulled down again like we saw today or are the bulls going to reclaim today's highs and start building uh, off its highs? So Q's need that 77 and a half level. Uh, the spies are gonna need to reclaim, you know, 375 and a half and start building 
uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in the higher direction as well. And when you look at the Russell, right, you have the same thing here. The, the Russell needs to get above that 77 level to have to stretch out for another uh, day or two. Before you start talking about swinging and this, then that thing, remember, you cannot swing stocks below the 50 day moving average. There's a difference in if you wanna take a shot on something, but taking shots is not a hypo, you know, it, it, it's not a probability. You're taking shots, like buying a lottery ticket is taking a shot. Buying $50 out of the money calls into earnings, what do you have, some sort of skill set? You took a shot, right? So you cannot take shots when we're below the 50 day moving average. If you uh, ever start wanting a swing, and again, yes, you could turn around with that theory, I could buy it and use the previous lows. Again, you can do that, but the highest probability swing Swings are always going to become above the 50 day moving average and the highest probability declines are always going to become below the 50 day moving average as well. And that's kind of what we are. And keep this in mind. We say this on every single video. Stocks are not going to go straight down in a bear cycle. There's always going to be upside bias. That's where we're going to get. That's where we're getting in the last few days. It could obviously end at any time. So those levels that we talked about for the last few minutes, they're going to be needing very, very badly to get reclaimed, especially tomorrow on those opening range lows, uh, opening range highs, or we could have a scenario that we potentially could get a second day wash. Again, I'm not speaking out of both my mouths. Uh, all you have to do is just look at the charts and look where the stocks are trading after hours, and you'll see they're right in the middle of the ranges. Again, I'm not a good guesser and I need confirmation to make things right. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, hope everybody's doing well. Go Yanks, first inning, three nothing. Hopefully it stays that way, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.